गुड मॉर्निंग चिल्ड्रन बेटर स्टडी चैप्टर 15 ह्यूमिडिटी व्हेन यू टेक आउट समथिंग फ्रॉम द फ्रिज यू सी आफ्टर सम टाइम सम ड्रॉपलेट्स आर प्रेजेंट ऑन द सरफेस ऑफ द वेसल दिस इज बिकॉज द टेंपरेचर इनसाइड द वेसल इज लो देन द टेंपरेचर आउटसाइड द वेसल or vice versa is the condition means when the temperature of the vessel is more than the temperature of the atmosphere which is outside you will find these droplets so the amount of water vapor present in the air is known as humidity water is present in the atmosphere in three state that is gaseous state liquid state and solid state water gets condensed when heat is released means it turns up into liquid state and it freezes or turns up into ice state when temperature is low below freezing point and again the solid water turns up into gaseous state when heat is absorbed means temperature becomes high so or you can say water vapor turns up into condensation becomes solid or liquid when the heat is released and it melts when the temperature is high turns up into liquid state okay so again this gets evaporated when temperature increases water is always enters into the atmosphere or leaves the atmosphere means when the water enters into the atmosphere because of high temperature that is the process is known as evaporation the process by which water vapor forms water droplets on cooling is known as condensation the process by which water falls on the earth surface in solid or liquid form is known as precipitation so we have already discussed that the amount of water vapor present in the air is known as humidity and this humidity defines the weather condition now children factors affecting evaporation there are four factors which affect the evaporation temperature means if the temperature is high evaporation will be more and if it is less temp evaporation will be less surface area if surface area is wider means more evaporation humidity air is already holding moisture in the uh, air so the evaporation rate will be slow and if the air is dry means holding low, uh, less or no moisture in the air means the rate of evaporation will be high wind speed if the wind speed is slow then the pressure uh, evaporation rate will be slow and strong winds promote evaporation strong and dry winds promote evaporation as you can see wet clothes dry more quickly on a windy and a sunny day than in a calm condition children i have already told you what is humidity the amount of water vapor present in the air at a given temperature and area is known as humidity these are the two different ways to express the humidity absolute humidity and relative humidity absolute humidity say for example if somebody asks me what is the strength of the class i simply give the answer that 45 students are sitting in the class this is what is absolute humidity okay and if i say that the sitting capacity is 65 of 65 students but at present 45 students are present okay so this is what i have given the ratio between the present student and the sitting capacity that is what is relative humidity similarly the actual amount of water vapor present in the air is commonly referred to as absolute humidity relative humidity is a percentage of the amount of moisture the air can hold at a given temperature it is expressed 
in per cubic meter of air it is expressed in percentage absolute humidity is totally independent of the temperature and if the temperature goes up relative humidity goes down and vice versa hygrometer as you can see here is the instrument used to measure amount of humidity it is also known as dry and wet bulb thermometer because uh, this instrument has a piece of wet cloth as you can see here uh, dipped around the bulb the other end of the cloth dips into a small container of water and uh the rate of evaporation of water from the wet bulb keeps the temperature of this bulb lower than the dry bulb a difference in a temperature between the two thermometers indicates the relative humidity saturated air means the air which is holding enough amount of moisture at a given temperature will not allow evaporation and in that case the temperature reading on both the dry and wet bulb thermometer will be same and this would mean that relative humidity is 100% now children condensation condensation is just opposite of evaporation means for evaporation temperature should be high which turns up the liquid water present on the earth surface into vapor state and water goes up due to the high temperature turns up into gaseous state okay and in evaporation the latent heat is absorbed whereas in condensation the temperature becomes low hence the water starts falling on the surface of the earth in the solid or liquid state latent heat means the hidden heat is released so what is condensation condensation in humid conditions the a condensation will appear at higher temperature the difference in temperature between the internal and external environment means as a given example uh, internal means in uh, interior of the vessel and external means outside the vessel as well as the glass will cause condensation to form during winters as you can see the water droplets gets collected over the surface of the glass okay now the conditions for condensation there must be sufficient water vapor in the air there must be condensation nuclei means the dust particle around which the water vapor can get accumulated dew point the temperature at which the air gets saturated so it has been met it means it has been reached Uh, uh, so that air is saturated with the water and cannot hold any more moisture now condensation nuclei that is tiny particles like dust pollen salt ash even bacteria that provides a surface of water to get condensed forms of condensation dew frost fog mist clouds even smog this water droplets is due then fog as you can see this dense fog when the uh, visibility decreases uh, that is beyond 1 km okay so mean uh, and this is mist when things are visible beyond 1 km and this is frost the frozen droplets of water on the grass smog during winter nights when the dust particle gets accumulated with the fog so smoke plus fog is known as smog is also a forms of condensation remember then children clouds clouds are what the type of condensation at the higher altitude so clouds can be classified into three different groups on the basis of height this like low at the low height stratus stratonimbus strato cumulus cumulus cumulonimbus generally nimbus word is associated with the clouds which gives rainfall nimbus stratus alto stratus these are 
clouds of middle altitude okay and the clouds of higher altitude are cirrostratus cirrus and cirroclumbus so you have three categories cirrus means the clouds which are fleecy like wool generally at high altitude cumulus have a cauliflower like cloud as you can see cauliflower here shape and stratus clouds have a layered structure and the base of cumulus cloud is horizontal but they have a vertical structure you can see here vertical structure and their top is dome shaped okay like cauliflower they are generally termed as rain bearing clouds now precipitation falling of water in solid or liquid state on the surface of the earth is known as precipitation types of precipitation rain as you can see here snowfall sleet mixture of rain and uh, snow both hail and the fifth form is drizzle the light rainfall is known as drizzle then types of rainfall orographic orographic means related to the mountains or relief rainfall so for this rainfall there should be mountains presence of mountain hot and humid air and which can go uh, to the direction of mountains and this side from uh, from where the winds are moving towards a mountain is known as windward side so water gets accumulated means condensation takes place on the windward side of the mountain okay so it rains on the windward side but on the leeward side the wind starts descending down giving no rainfall or very light rainfall so this side is known as leeward side convectional rainfall the best example of convectional rainfall you can see even in your kitchen when you are boiling water means when the warm water goes up gets condensed on the lid okay and when you open it it comes in the contact with the cool air which is surrounding it and the water droplets starts falling on the in the pan similarly sun heats up the sur land surface so the air which is present on the earth surface gets warm so the warm air always goes up condense in the upper layer of the atmosphere and falls in the form of rainfall this is cyclonic rainfall or frontal rainfall means from one side warm air is forced to rise up because warm air is lighter so condensation forms clouds at the meeting point of warm air and the cold air because cold air is always heavier and it suppresses down so condensation occurs rapidly at the front that is at the point where the warm air is meeting with the cold air that's that is why it is known as frontal rainfall or cyclonic rainfall